Hello, my name is Brett Golab and welcome to Standard Measurement Systems short tutorial on Heidenheim's PWM20 testing a TTL encoder. In front of you is the PWM20. You can see X1 is the input, X2 is the output, X3 is a separate functions connector. It's a little mini DIN connector. You have X4 for drive click and you have the L1 and L2 indicator lights. The input is coming from the scale. The output would be then going back to your control or digital readout. Uh, the L1 and L2 indicators are described a little later. And here you can see your standard computer power supply and your USB B type connection to go to your laptop or desktop, whichever you prefer. The L1 and L2 indicator lights display that the unit has power, that's L1, and L2 displays that it's connected to an encoder. After you've connected everything, you can go to your PC and select the ATS logo displayed earlier and configure hardware if you don't see your option to connect encoder above. Once you click on connect encoder, you have a couple options. You can either A, enter the ID number, or do it manually, which will be shown here soon. And pay close attention to the use power supply from subsequent electronics button. If you're plugging it in in line, and you want to test it under machine operation, and you have a cable into your output going back to your control, you'll want to check that box. And that will use the 5 volts from your control rather than the 5 volts from the PWM20. You can see if you enter an ID number you'll get the encoder information below but for now we're going to go to manual settings. You can read this dialog box it basically says don't play with this if you're not sure about what the encoder that you're looking at is supposed to output. Here I'm going to select 5 volts. I can select or leave unselected the adjust voltage over sensor lines. Uh, it's not critical to operation. And then I'm going to select TTL from my interface module. And click forward. It's going to ask you to verify what you set up. And I'll click connect. And now we are connected into the encoder. You can disconnect and then I show you reconnecting again real quick. Again, pay close attention to the subsequent electronics box. If you're plugged in inline, you'll want to check that. One more time, 5 volts. It's a TTL encoder, so I'll select that and click forward and verify my selection on the next screen. Once we're connected in, the L2 LED on your actual PWM20 hardware will activate. This says that the PWM20 is supplying its 5 volts, and you should not go disconnecting and connecting the encoder without extreme care at that point in time, or at least turning off the unit, ideally. Once you go into the encoder, signal screen you have four different options above as well as some s some keys down at the bottom you've got your a channel your b channel and your reference mark a counter your frequency levels your failure signal indicators and then your different levels for each signal at the bottom you have a start recording or start measurement button which you can turn off the measurement. You have a reference latch button which latches the signal and gives you your reference trigger indicator as well as your TTL levels which adds the sensor or the error line at the bottom in brown and then that refresh button will refresh any minor errors that you had. If you do have an error up at your failure signal, you can re-clear that, uh, that latch indicator and make sure that it wasn't just a fluke error. If your logic screen, your counter screen, 
And on your counter screen, you can set up the basic specifications of the encoder. So for most in ca cases, you're dealing with a 20 micron grading period and either a times 5 or a times 10 TTL signal on the interpolation. Once you get those set up, you can then select the single reference mark pulse there and it will start counting on the first reference mark it sees and it will be accurate to your metric display at that point in time if everything's set up properly. So you can use this screen to do a little bit more crude diagnostic or more in-depth diagnostics as well as fin finally locate your reference mark. If you select the single reference mark you'll be able to locate the reference mark on the scale physically within a few micron typically. Here's your notes the speed calculation too high references is not typically important. Um, it was likely due to me uh, testing the encoder by hand. Back to the level screen, you'll see a nice TTL square wave coming back from the encoder I have plugged in. Um, basically a, a digital square wave. Your A and your B channel should be 180 degrees separated in phase and your reference mark should be either 90 degrees or 270 degrees of the pulse width depending on which specific model you're looking at. You can see here that I have a nice even pulse width 90 de or 180 degrees offset with a 90 degree reference mark as I should. If you see anything but this going at a constant speed you should be concerned. The logic screen is basically just showing me what the computer will see, either a high or low value for each channel and for the reference mark. So it takes the 0 to 3.5 volts and just makes it standard 0 to 1 on off logic. Those are the general features of the Heidenheim PWM20 testing a TTL encoder. If you have any questions, please contact us at the contact information on the screen shortly. What's up? You got me coming through the door, did you?